record this thing. So welcome to Art 116. Um, I'm just kind of finishing up my painting. You guys are probably just finishing up your paintings. Um, the due date uh, for this painting is tonight at midnight. So I was kind of hoping that today we could talk about them a little bit. We did kind of a uh, preliminary um, critique this morning with the morning class. And there was only three people in the morning class. So it was like pulling teeth, let me tell you. Um, but a couple people were willing to share and a couple people had their paintings two thirds, three quarters of the way done. And so, you know, they have 12 hours or more to finish it before midnight tonight. So I was hoping that what we were able to accomplish, what we were able to kind of look at in the, um, in the paintings that we were sharing with each other would help each other to just try to complete something or to point out something that you may be overlooking that we may be overlooking because sometimes um, our eyes just get so inured to looking at the same thing at all the time that sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees anymore. So I wanted to see if you guys were willing to share your compositions. And as a matter of fact, I'll take the first hit. I'll, I'll be the one to put it out there for you guys to respond to. So let me start with the screen sharing uh, or the, you know, the painful sharing um, with this painting right here, because I've been working on it uh, like you guys trying to make this work. And so I've got my palette here with my four basic colors that I'm trying to deal with and the original painting. And if I can hold this bad boy down so that it lays flat, um, I got some really good feedback from my students this morning. They were kind of concerned that my background was too dark, that my background didn't have enough kind of reflected light in it. And so I brought in a smattering of this kind of, um, you know, uh, in my case, yellow, orange and red and even a few more green dots into this triangular area right here, which corresponds to this triangular area over here in the original painting, which isn't necessarily dark. It is, it is not as bright, brightly lit as the foreground area of the painting, but it has some light in it. And so I needed to try to bring a little bit more higher key dots interspersed with the dots I already had there in this triangular space here. And maybe there's this kind of a, it's kind of a button hook shape right here of high key in the composition too. So it's kind of an interesting fish hook shape right there. And so I was, you know, without trying to copy it exactly, I was trying to get that right into this area too because it seems like it's an important part. And we don't always recognize what's going on in the background or in the corners of the composition because we're so um, concentrated on trying to get the actual shapes that are the focal point of the composition. And one of the cool things about painting and really about basic design is to be able to look at the entire composition and to recognize that something secondary in the background is something that can actually help sell the whole piece, that can kind of help create unity or just make the thing work better. And so I was just wondering, I'll kind of try to hold this down a little bit so that you can kind of see the composition and not have to deal with quite so much reflection, but is there any area of this thing that's bugging you that isn't quite right? It can be a shape, like it can be an apple that isn't quite round. You know, if there is a contour or a surface of an area of an apple that's sticking out and just isn't quite right, and you can you can identify it, please tell us because that would be great. If there's something about the pool of light in the foreground that isn't working for you, you know, let me know. I told you about addressing these areas in the background to try to break up the background so that it wasn't just a Johnny one note dark area in the back. And then what's really difficult to see, I think, because there's so much, um, there's still a lot of reflection kind of happening um, off of my ceiling lights. But in this area where I have a cast shadow coming off the back of this thing here, and to some extent, 
some broken up area of the light in this bottom corner because this is not as strong as this is over here. This is the main pool of light and then things get a little bit uh, diffused and uh, neutralized over in that corner. So I, I'm, I'm holding my hand here to keep the, that highlight off of the paint so that you can actually sort of see what's going on here in the painting. So please feel free to unmute your mic. You are not gonna hurt my feelings if there's anything that you can see in this thing that is bugging you that you don't like. You know, is there a highlight or some kind of area of the um, apples that is just not working that you can see um, and that you can try to put words to, to, to kind of help me out because I would appreciate any help. That's what critiques are all about at this point. So um, anybody want to take a stab at this before we move on to take a stab at yours? <laughs> now, I would just say I like how you did the green on the apples. I wasn't quite sure how to do that on mine, but I like how you wrapped that in there. Well, I cheated. I mean, cheating always helps. Um, and, and I say that kind of making a joke about it, but um, you know, he is painting wet in wet with his brush strokes. And so he's able to get a lot more mileage out of his greens because they're intermingling with the yellows and some of the neutral colors that he's got going on in these apples. And edges become very diffuse at the beginning and the end of a brush stroke. And so it's like, okay, how, these are supposed to be green apples. They've only got like 10% green in them because most of them are yellowish. How do, you, how do you address that? How do you deal with that? And so I've been struggling mightily with that. And of course, this whole idea of trying to do this in a pointillist style isn't helping things. I will be the first one to tell you that that makes life harder for us when we're trying to do it in a pointillist style rather than in this kind of painterly style with a paintbrush wet in wet. But I do kind of like to do that just to get us thinking about applying paint um, one color at a time and building up and paying attention to the paint shapes that we're making. Some of these, what do you call them? These crescent shapes um, that are in the composition and the smaller maybe, um, uh, I keep calling them a comma shape, but like this little highlight right here, this kind of little highlight that kind of comes in here like this, all of these secondary smaller shapes that are highlights or some kind of splotch in the painting, hopefully it actually wraps around the apple and somehow caresses the apple to reinforce the idea of a sphere. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get curving, rounded kinds of secondary and tertiary kinds of marks. And you know, if you can get, if you're making dots, then you're trying to uh, connect the dots. The viewer's eye is trying to connect the dots to get that sense of volume happening in the center of the piece of fruit. Anyway, sorry, I, I can't stop myself from talking. So thank you, um, Mary, for your comment. I appreciate that. Does anybody else want to um, say anything about this? I'm not, it's not like I'm, I'm hunting for compliments or anything, but I just wanted you to know that I am struggling like you guys are trying to build the painting out of four colors. And so um, one thing that I am doing is kind of coming in and very carefully adding these green dots and really putting them so that they are overlapping slightly on some of the other dots. I'm finding that, um, you know, when you've got these big yellow dots that are sitting here, um, just um, calling attention to themselves, sometimes you got to come back over the top of it with a little piece of red or a little piece of green and actually take a bite out of some of these really bright yellow dots to knock them back a little bit. And uh, so the last application of dots, you know, you want to slow down a little bit and apply each dot as if it's, if it's as if it matters, as if it means something or is trying to create some kind of a shape because it does. And, you know, I, I can say that, I've also got 30 years of experience doing this. So it's not fair when you guys are kind of coming in for the first time and trying to figure out, oh my God, how am I, how am I supposed to do this and make it look like something? Um, I'm gonna come back to the uh, talking head version of me and ask you guys, are there any of you who have something that you'd like to share either as a screen share 
uh, if you have a um, uh, photograph of it that you could screen share. Um, I, why did I hit screen share? I don't know why I hit screen share. Um, can I get out of this? I guess I can. So you could screen share it or you could, you know, hold it up to your webcam like this so that we could actually see it in the webcam. And if you could just hold it steady enough for about a minute or something so that we can look at it, comment on it, and then give you a little bit of feedback, that'd be fantastic. And this is not required today, but, you know, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. Um, but this is this would give you a last little bit of critique where you could still fill in or make a change or something before finishing it. Nick is here with something. What's up? Yeah, I can share mine. Great. I got it. Okay. I've got my uh, my volume turned up as high as I can. So you might have to lean into your microphone just a little bit. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we're going to um, add the pin. I'm sorry. We're going to replace the pin. You get to be the pin. Um, shit, I got to I got to remove my pen. Okay, so there we go. Good. Oh, fantastic. Okay. I love the green apples, especially they are working really good. I like the higher key green in the centers off center left. And then the the uh, crescents of the lower key greens off to the right. Um, and that's starting to coalesce a little bit in the red apples. It's not quite as strong as in the green apples. Um, really like the um, the shaded areas, the red violets that are in the middle of uh, in between the apples and the cast shadow uh, behind that last apple on the right. That's cool. Um, that's good. Uh, anybody else see anything that you want to comment on real quick before Nick gets tired of holding this thing up? <laughs> yeah, no, the shading or the highlights or whatever in the green apples are really good. Okay. And yeah, yeah, it is it is showing up in the red apples too. That's great. Okay. So um, Nick, you can you can put it down now if you want. All I all I want to say is I, I see that there's still some areas of the background that are a little bit unaddressed. And so you're probably going to be spending another hour or two finishing that up, yeah. which is good. I also see that your um, dots are a little bit larger than mine, which is fine. It it gives a little bit more of a sense of um, abstraction to it, which is kind of nice. That feels good. So, you know, we can do that. And uh, so if it's going to be a little bit more impressionistic, it's going to be a little bit more abstract with larger sized dots. I have no problem with that. That's fine. You're still getting exactly just a similar effect. You know, it's just these dots do not all have to be micro dots, you know, so that's fine. You're doing good. Yeah, all right. Gosh. Anybody else want to play our game and unmute your mic and maybe show us uh, how your project is coming along? Skylar, Matts, you did this already. You did this on Monday. Do you want to do it again? I, well, I, I showed you mine, but did you want me to show the rest of the class or not? Sure. Let's see. Was that a screen share you did on Monday? No, I wasn't, I wasn't able to attend due to family matters on Monday. So I emailed it to you. Oh, yes. I remember seeing it. I just couldn't remember the context. Okay. So do you want to, um, do you want to hold it up to your webcam today? Uh, oh no, I don't have makeup on today. So no, 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 no camera. I will nope. screen share. You will screen share. Okay. So I'm just going to make <laughs> sure I've got multiple participants enabled. Please go right ahead and screen share. And I will pin the thing to you. Um, so once, once it decides it wants to screen share, here it comes. Okay. And then I got your email about the dark background or I mean about darkening the background more. I haven't been able to get to that quite yet, but I will do that before I turn it in. Okay. I love the textures that you're getting here from whatever your tool is doing. I, it's, it's amazing to see these different dots. A lot of them have a little halo around the edge. How are you doing that? Are you painting wet in wet um, to, so, to get that texture? So I, I tried a little bit of both. I was doing like, <clears throat> like multiple layers of dry and then um, to kind of like, I don't know, break up the back round, like especially in this like kind of areas. Um, and then on some of the like areas of the apple, I I didn't paint ret on ret necessarily, but I 
I kind of like bulked up my end of my paintbrush with paint and then like just removed parts of the um, paint on like the very end. And that's how I kind of got like that halo kind of gunked up look, if that makes sense. I don't, I don't know. It ended up making like that, that texture, that feel. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Well, I really like the apple in the center on the bottom row. That one is just killing it in terms yeah. of its three dimensionality and the way that it, the forms are kind of caressing around the roundness of the form and creating this spherical illusion. That one is really good. The green apple on the end on the upper right hand corner is also kind of coming into its own there. That's working out really good. Um, the only major thing that I'm seeing is that maybe the background could be knocked back just a little bit more in terms of a little bit more darkness or a little bit more neutral by like interspersing the dots a little bit more. Um, but I do like the, uh, the pool of light in the foreground. Um, that works really well. Um, that's, that's working good. So that kicks the foreground forward. Right now, I'm just trying to figure out how to kick the background back. And so maybe a slightly, just a, a more amount of uh, darker dots, uh, your two maybe lower key colors um, kind of interspersed in the background to just, just take that down a little bit and knock it into the background a little bit more. I like the shade of the shadows between the apples. They really uh, create a lot of contrast and make the apples pop. And I like this shaded area on the right side in the lower right hand corner, the cast shadow coming off of that last apple on the right. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of murky quality of what's going on in that right hand corner there. That's working for me. I like that. Okay. Good. Does, does anybody else want to dare to um, you know, wade in at this point with any kind of feedback even I like it's will work for me at this point uh if you guys wanted to unmute your mic and give a little bit of feedback to Skylar yeah I like the um what is it the the texture I guess or the the lumpiness the shape of the apples that you got you know rather than them just being perfectly round you're able to get the shadows and the shapes of them thanks yeah I was really trying <laughs> so Skylar are you a painter have you painted before um, not physically. I, I do more digital art. So I was just trying to think, okay, what would I do if I was using my Adobe products? <laughs> so it, it was a learning curve. But then once I like figured out, um, when, once I related like what I would do on my computer to what I'm doing on the paper, then it, it went smoother. <laughs> Okay, now I am intrigued because that's a really interesting thing. So, you know, you have done digital art. You've, you've played with, um, you know, uh, imagery and, you know, pretty strong um, tools with Illustrator and Photoshop. So how do you feel about manipulating this stuff with real color and real paint? Is this is there is it similar are you, i mean it sounds like you were really able to bring in some of the ideas that you had previously into this which i love that cross pollination of of media that's good um so parts of it yes were similar um i felt like i had to work a little harder with the paint in some ways just because like if it didn't work the first time i couldn't hit control z to go back I had to let it dry and then redo it. And, and that was frustrating. Um, oh. But then by layering, and it's not like, like Photoshop or Illustrator where you have like those um, solid layers. Like even if you lowered the opacity of the layers, it's still not the same, I guess, when you're using paint. Cause then you have paint and you're like, you're building up those, um, those layers and you're getting that texture again and, and just the, the different colors. And it was, it was different, but a, a good exercise. <laughs> well, that's beautiful. This has actually never come up in conversation before. So this is this is really valuable and I'm glad that I've got it on record right now. Um, digitally, you can go backwards. You can go back to earlier steps and states of your piece. In painting, um, the only way you can go is forward. And so what painters do, since we don't have an eraser available to us, we pretty much just have to paint over 
what isn't working and keep making more and more coats, you know, putting more and more layers of paint on to see if we can get it to change or, uh, you know, make that whatever adjustment we need to do color-wise or form-wise. So it's kind of interesting to see that there's, you know, uh, different mindset, different um, approach to uh, creating the form, the contrasts, and, you know, the, the color choices uh, between digital and um, analog painting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, you can stop sharing your screen now. I think that's wonderful. Um, and this has been, you know, kind of a really good learning experience um, for me as a teacher, because it really hasn't been something that, um, you know, that, that I've had to um, address, you know, really talking to a digital artist about um, painting techniques or talking to painters about digital techniques and trying to see what what are the similarities, what are the differences, and how does that cross-pollinate. So that's really interesting. Um, we've been at this, I don't know, for 25 minutes or so. We don't have to go the whole time because some of you, many of you, are still probably working on your paintings. But for the good of the order, is there anybody else who wants to share something? Um, this would be our last one and then we'll call it a day. Mary? I can I can share mine. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking that was interesting, Skylar, about the digital thing, because I I've used Photoshop, but I forget about the different layers. So I'll keep working on one layer and forget I have the others stacked up. But like for the physical stuff, I can see something that I need to fix and it just stays there in front of me. So that to me is easier than the digital. <laughs> Fantastic. So Mary, do you have yours? Do you want to show yours to your webcam or do you want to do a screen share? I have it on. I can do screen share. I think I've got it. Yeah. Okay. I can screen share it. Yeah. Okay, and here it comes. Did it work? I have yes, a hard time there, keeping track of it. Is. Okay. Okay. All right. So, well, this is kind of nice because you've got all of your paints and your paintbrush and everything right there. It, that's a, just a really handy little thing going on. Um, wow. I like the effects. It's it's more graphic because almost the, there's less... Um, there's, there's less uh, interspersion of dots. Um, and so it, it kind of has, I don't know, I can't, I, words fail me in terms of how to characterize it, but it seems um, um, it has a, a more of a graphic uh, feel to me. If any of you guys who are digital artists can characterize this, the look of this thing, uh, if there's a phrase, um, please jump in because I appreciate it. I was um, thinking it ended up looking like you were saying graphic or like a print or something. Yeah. Um, it really, uh, when it's this stark, um, you can really see whether, what the shapes are doing for the apples and which apple shapes are really um, working and selling it and which apples are struggling a little bit. I think um, the second uh, green apple, you know, on the top row seems a little elongated. Um, it seems just kind of like it's kind of pulled out of shape just a little bit. And so I was wondering about possibly um, uh, pushing the, uh, the shadows, the, the dark uh, blue-violet shadow kind of up uh, from the bottom to take a little bit more of a bite out of and kind of round out the bottom edge of that uh, green apple because um, that might help its shape quite a bit. Otherwise, it's highlight and the way that the green wraps around the apple and caresses the form is working. That is good. Both green apples are working real well. Most of the red apples are being very round and very red and spherical in terms of how they're reflecting light back to the viewer. Um, again, I might, if it were me, you know, I might uh, bring just a little smattering of more um, uh, middle and darker colors into the background to try to knock the background down a little bit. But I see that you actually appreciate 
and captured more of the idea that there was some light in the background and that there's just more light in the pool of light in the foreground. I really like your foreground, by the way. I like that pool of light with the smattering of other dots in there to break it up. The so idea of, yes. What would, what would be the middle uh, colors that you are talking about? Is that like the violet and the red or would that be green? Well, I'm, red and green would be middle uh, values. The violet is the darkest value. And so, you know, you don't always have to use the darkest value to darken up the background. Sometimes you can do it by just pulling in some more reds and green dots. Um, but you can also bring the occasional violet dot in too to kind of darken up that background. Um, I, I really like how your dots are applied so that sometimes the green dots are the last ones that have been painted and in other places it feels like the red dots were the last ones that were painted and I kind of like that um, the emerging of one color of dots as the dominant color that, that was the last one painted in some areas of the composition while in other areas you know other colors are like the final dots that were painted and so they emerge and that, that, that there's kind of a push pull with the different kind of color dots um, and how they kind of finish up the image. And I, I just, I like that. I've noticed that on this one and I kind of like that. Yeah, it seemed like the original painting was almost half and half, which like one side of it was more cool tones and the other seemed more warm tone. Yeah. In the background, at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I know that this is kind of, you know, high flying in terms of trying to bring in, um, you know, technical, you know, color critique into this thing. And you guys probably don't feel like you're super comfortable talking about this stuff. But anybody else who wants to make a comment on Mary's, even I like its uh, work for me at this point to get it, folks involved in the in the critiquing process. So please, um, please come on in. Yes, sir. It's almost it kind of reminds me I forget if it's saturation, but when you take like a photo in a photo editing software and you turn up or I believe turn up the saturation. Yes. Kind of what, how the colors remind me of. Yeah, I can definitely see that that uh, full saturation happening there. Um, and, and so the colors are working in stark contrast with each other and it has a very strong graphic effect on, on the eyeballs of the viewer, that's for sure, yes. Well, and then going along with what you were saying with the graphic um, aspect, this this right here, when I first saw it, I was thinking like like pop art. I was thinking like Andy Warhol or Roy Lichtenstein, like, um, like the comic pop art, and you see like all the dots, like the DPIs. And um, I, I think it was really interesting how you get such like what you were saying earlier, the stark contrast between those the, the shadows and the highlights and um and it's cool it's cool yeah um mary i have one more question for you what is the speed at which you're putting these dots down are you being really kind of slow and meticulous with every dot or are you going really fast how would you characterize the speed at which you work um i don't know maybe average <laughs> uh, I have I'm really nearsighted so I have a hard time especially with the yellow against the white seeing yeah. whether or not I've put the color down so it's kind of more I did an outline so I could keep track of where I was and then I put one color and then another and then just kind of finished it up so I mean I don't know okay well they seem much more carefully placed than mine I kind of go really fast but I kind of lose all my shapes because I've got so much kind of overlapping and you know mess happening. You don't seem to have any mess happening here. Everything seems very deliberate. And so there's, there's a feeling of uh, you know, much more carefully observed, deliberate um, dot making uh, on your piece. And I just, you know, whether it's true or not um, in terms of speed, um, you know, maybe you're just a deliberate person, no matter how fast you're working. <laughs> I might be. <laughs> All right. Well, we've been at it for over 30 minutes now, and this is just about when people's eyes start glazing over. So why don't we come back to me? Because who's it all about? It's all about me. I'm going to replace the pen to me. Um, this was good. I think that um, we learned a lot today uh, with this critiquing process. 
Um, we're going to give people who haven't had a chance yet to uh, show and tell their work on Friday and critique a little bit. And I'm going to transition into the next project and start demonstrating that. So please go ahead and finish these things up today if you can at all possibly get them done by midnight tonight and get them photographed and uploaded. And then hang on to that photograph, that digital photograph, so that we can screen share those things on Friday. And especially those who didn't get a chance yet to um, participate in the critique, I really want to see your pieces and let the other people in the class see them and respond to them too. So, and it, don't be intimidated by this. This is just a thing that I'm doing to try to show you that it's important enough that even a teacher, even an accomplished artist, you know, needs to do this too, um, and that it's worth doing. Um, but let's 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 continue this conversation on Friday, and you know, the, until then, uh, thank you all very much for being here today. I am going to end it for now, and see you guys again on Friday afternoon. So until then, goodbye.